stuff. Hey guys, welcome back to live q and I'm El Simone and this is my favorite person, Jack Bishop. And we're uh, giving you our bi-weekly series of uh, where you get a chance to ask test cooks in our kitchen all of your interesting food questions. Um, and we're excited to have our friends from Facebook and YouTube joining us today. Yeah, between the two of us, we think we can answer most of your pressing cooking questions. I hope so. Yeah, so are we ready to like click over and see the first question yeah, that comes let's do through? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, well, Mary from Twitter says, mashed potatoes for a huge crowd. How can I make this easy and done ahead of time? This is you. This I, is you. I just did this at Thanksgiving. So we had 18 people, and I made the Duchess potatoes from Cook's Illustrated. It's basically mashed potatoes that you can make a day in advance. You enrich them with a lot of egg yolks. Put them in a baking dish. You score the top, make a little pretty pattern. You save uh, the whites, so the yolks go into the potatoes, and the whites go on top right before it goes in the oven, and then it, they brown and crisp. The best mashed potatoes, and you do it 24 hours in advance. And, and Jack has lots of friends who come over for holidays just for these potatoes. They're legit, they're legit. Okay, so Robert B. from Twitter says, how can I adapt your 100% whole wheat pancakes into waffles. I love the flavor of these pancakes and would love that flavor in waffles too. Still 100% whole wheat, thanks. I actually think, I don't know if we're gonna agree on this, that pancake batter and waffle batter are basically the same I agree, thing. I agree. Um, I think they're pretty much the same. I mean, sometimes when you have a, a batter, if you feel like it's a little too thick, adding whatever the liquid base is, if it's, your, if it's a coconut milk or if it's milk or water, adding just a touch of more liquid can kind of loosen it up and make it more adaptable for your waffle iron if you need to, but yeah. you shouldn't need to. It's pretty much the same. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, and if the batter seems a little stiff, just um, push it with the Spread measuring you know, yeah. cup, uh, the back of the measuring cup or the spatula so that you've got even coverage. But I would try it as is. And then as Elle said, if you feel like you need to adjust by adding a little bit more or less liquid, but um, it should work just fine. Yeah. And the other thing about waffles, I feel like you cannot overcook a waffle. Most no. people take it out of the iron too early and you know it's not brown enough. And with whole wheat, it's gonna be hard to see. Mm -hmm. Just let it keep going yeah. and it's super crisp so that it's also cooked all the oh. way through. I think I want waffles now. <laughs> oh my. Um, let's see. How can I increase? Asma K from Twitter wants to know how can I increase the amount of gravy I make from chicken, turkey drippings when they're just not enough without sacrificing flavor? Well, we talked about this on our uh, Thanksgiving segment where you can always use um, a chicken broth. Um, you can create your own vegetable broth from scratch, which is a very, very easy. Um, recipe that you can find in the vegan cookbook. Um, it's vegan for everybody, in case you're wondering. It's an excellent book. Um, and, you know, we also offer uh, lots of ways to make gravy um, inclusive or exclusive, excluding um, the drippings from the turkey. So you got lots of, lots of options make, making backup gravy. So I'm going to ask, uh, answer this one. Mona from I, NZ, New Zealand? I think so. I think we got somebody hey, from New Mona. Zealand. Hey, does baking soda expire? Yes, and I have a little test. Did you know that you can actually throw some baking soda into some vinegar and sort of see if you get a reaction? Oh. And if you don't get a reaction, then your baking soda is now ready to go into the fridge and where it can absorb odors. I think that's why my volcano science project didn't work. <laughs> Maybe my baking soda was expired. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of baking soda to not pour half of the, the box into the vinegar. It did not erupt at all. Uh, Good to know. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, right. Jack. You're a wealth of knowledge. Um, well, I have, what's, um, what's the best uh, finishing salt for bread and uh, veggies, like bread and butter and veggies? I like Maldon. That's my favorite. I'm with you. That's yeah. what I have on my table. It's this English sea salt that's super flaky. Yeah. It's my finishing salt for fish, for vegetables, on a piece of bread with some butter. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much my salt for everything. My favorite is, um, uh, it's like a little French delicacy with radishes dipped in butter, and mm -hmm. I sprinkle them all down, let them sit in the fridge. Nice little snack. That's yeah. butter and vegetables, ladies and gentlemen. 
So William from YouTube, when making pasta, is it always says to use cold water to fill the pot. Does it really matter if it's hot or cold? That's a great question. Yeah, so two things here. Um, if you live in an old house or an old apartment building, the hot water tends to pick up some of the uh, metals from mm. the pipes. And so you can get some sort of metallic flavors in your water. So if you're, it's a big deal if you're making tea. Right. Um, it can be a deal if you're making pasta. And so one of the reasons why most recipes say to use cold water from the tap is you get less of the metals coming up uh, out of your old system. Um, the thing is, it does take longer to bring cold water to a boil. True. Um, so I don't know. I, I always use cold water. Do you use cold water? I do uh, use cold water. I mean, because usually if I'm making pasta, I kind of have time, you know, like to just wait for water to come to a boil. So, okay, we got lots of interesting questions today. Daniel from Facebook. Hi, Daniel. He says, hi. Hi. I've made Boston cream pie several times, but I don't understand why hot milk is added to the recipe. What is the purpose? Why do I have to simmer the milk before I add it? Why don't other cakes ask for this? Well, I'm no baker, but... So there are two things. So old recipes, you know, used to scald the milk, right. where you would heat the milk up. You don't need to scald milk anymore. Mm. But the other, what I think is happening here is there are some um, cakes that are called hot milk cakes, where you actually heat the milk before it goes into the batter. And it gives you a very specific kind of texture that I think is a little bit springier. Um, my sense is that the heated milk is doing something to the gluten and the flour. Mm. And so you end up with a different texture crumb. And because Boston cream pie, which of course is not a pie, it's cake, you've got custard and you've got chocolate syrup, yes. you need a tender but sturdy cake. And yeah. then I think the hot milk is helping you get that desired texture. Well, that, I think that just describes Boston in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh-oh. This one. I'm, I'm worried about this one. Jesse from Facebook. My <laughs> wife and I disagree. I'm going to tell you right now before I read the question, your wife is right. <laughs> but just, true. Hey, true. I've been married 26 true. years. So, you know, you're right, sweetie. Um, <laughs> a, a recipe calls for one cup melted butter. Should I measure the butter before melting or once it's melted? That's a really good question. Um, I think it's how it reads in the recipe. If it calls for one cup of butter melted, you would give one cup of butter, right? Um, also, She's right, you know, totally right. Um, more than likely, though, if it if it's melted, it becomes a liquid. Also, and liquid is measured in a cup. Yeah, I think this is a case <laughs> the where measure. they're the same. But Elle's got a really good point that where the modifier, which is what melted, is placed in the recipe is a big deal. So the yes. one I like to tell people, if it says a half cup of nuts, comma, chopped, you measure a half cup of nuts. Then, then you, chop. Yeah. And if yes. it says a half cup of chopped nuts, you chop, then, then you measure. measure. Yes. So in this case, in theory, if it's written as one cup melted butter, you melt, and then you measure. Then you measure but I think right. it's going to be the same. It should, it should be the so same. So I think their marriage right? is fine. OK. I think they're both right. This your lucky day, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, can you freeze Charlotte from A from Twitter? Hi, Charlotte. Um, she wants to know, can you freeze eggs for later use in baking? If so, how? Um, I've definitely frozen egg whites. And I've frozen yolks. Yeah. <laughs> so. so the answer is you can definitely do it. I've done it in an ice tray. Um, you can probably do it in just some type of uh, freezer safe storage container? Yeah, I think it's more often that you're going to be separating them, so you don't want to put them in the shells and then freeze them because yeah. that's, 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 that's not going to be good. Yeah. But if you separate them, egg whites, I just put in a tray. Mm -hmm. um, in the test kitchen, if we have extra yolks, we put a little bit of sugar syrup on them to keep the yolks from drying out before mm -hmm. they go into the freezer. That seems a little fussy, but it, it probably does make a better. I tend to have more whites left over. I don't know yeah. about you. I mean, I've always. always got recipes with lots of yolks yeah. and then extra whites. I save them for cocktails. Always. Yeah. Whiskey sour? Oh, yeah. As soon as we're done. Uh, oh, this is my favorite question. Um, MS, I don't know who you are, but hi, MS, from YouTube, wants to know what are your favorite cookbooks? I have several favorite cookbooks. OK. Um, the Complete Make Ahead Cookbook, um, and I love that book for several reasons. I like to cook food in advance because 
when I think about it, that's when I want to make it because sometimes I lose the zest. Also, um, the cover is one of my photos. I love that. That's why it's my favorite. Um, I also love vegan for everybody. That's very much my favorite. And I'm not, um, I'm not very comfortable in the baking zone. So um, Bread Illustrated, which is an award-winning book, by the way, is one of my favorite books. I love Bread Illustrated. It's got some great recipes. And for, for Robin, who wanted to know about sourdough recipes, that's where you go, Robin. Bread Illustrated. Yeah, so um, the book I'm cooking the most out of that uh, came out of our test kitchen is our Mediterranean book. Oh, good one. But I gotta say, what's like, I, I used to ask this question in interviews actually. I would tell people, you're going to a desert island, but it has a fully stocked kitchen. What book are you bringing with you as a way to understand what kind of cook you are? And my answer is, I would always bring a Marcello Hazan book because it's mm -hmm. the book that I used to teach myself all about Italian cooking. Oh, wow. So, do you have a favorite like book from when you were a young cook that you, you, that you just feel like you can't mm -hmm. imagine who you'd be without that book? Um, I would have to say probably um, Home Cooking by Edna Lewis. Oh. Yeah. She's, she's one of my uh, classic favorite chefs, you know. Um, I love her book and High on the Hog. Yeah, so I think if you want a, a great book, I think those are both from the 70s. Uh, uh, um, Edna Lewis is from the 70s. High on the Hog um, is a book from the 2000s, uh, actually okay. by Dr. Jessica Harris. Pretty awesome book. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, okay. We're, yeah, well, so. Our, to our home cooks who've been joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube, we're really glad that you've been here for the first part of the live Q&A. We're going yeah. till 3 today. Yeah, we're going to go till 3, but you have to come on over to americastestkitchen.com slash live to finish this conversation. Bring all your questions. We have almost all the answers, and we'd be happy to see you there. Thanks for joining us on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.